Welcome to Electron Online, and now let's take a look at the, the Newtonian Reflecting Telescope. Remember what we said in the last video that refracting telescopes became impractical, especially when they began to build them larger and larger. But the larger you made them, the larger the objective lens had to be, and since it was made out of a solid piece of glass, the weight would begin to de deform that glass and made it difficult to keep a good shape and keep a good image, a good sharp image with these refracting telescopes. Already, many hundreds of years ago, Newton came up with a very ingenious device in building a new type of telescope called the reflecting telescope. So instead of having the light come through an objective lens and refract or bend the light, Newton built a telescope with a mirror at the very bottom of the telescope. So at the top, the telescope was open. The light could come in through the open part of the telescope and bounce off the parabolic mirror at the bottom. This had to be a parabolic shape in order to reflect the light properly, parabolic, that's spelled correctly there. So what would happen is the light would come in, bounce off the mirror, reflect back up, and would normally come together at a single point right here, which would then be the focal point. So this here would be the focal point of the objective lens. It's called the focal point. And this here is called the objective, or the objective mirror in this case. So objective mirror, it's not a lens. And so the light would then be reflected back, but before it came together here at the focal point, you would put a mirror in its place, a small mirror at an angle, so the light rays that are reflected would bounce off the mirror, reflect in this direction, and then finally with a small eyepiece over there, you would then look at the telescope in that direction. So, oop, arrow should go this way. This is called the eyepiece through which you would see the image, and the image would then form. It would then, of course, be a virtual image that would form somewhere out here in the direction that you're looking. It would also be inverted or upside down, and it would be a virtual image indeed. But what is the big advantage to having a telescope like this versus a refracting telescope? Well, for one, you can make these lenses very big. You could put a very big steel supporting structure at the bottom of the telescope right there, to hold the mirror in place, regardless how heavy it was, you could build a very strong structure so that the mirror would stay perfectly shaped the way it was meant to be. And it turns out that using this technology, we've built some very, very large telescopes. The largest one that we built here in the United States was five meters across the Hale telescope, and the mirror weighed thousands of pounds, probably several tons of mirror that we had to build here at the bottom. And nevertheless, the, salt, the very strong steel structure, not getting in the way of the light rays, would then be able to support that mirror. So this new design that was built, this mirror was built in, uh, or this telescope was built in 1672 by Newton. Notice Newton was about 30 years old when he built that telescope. Very ingenious to come up with this design. Now, what happens though is that the focal length of these telescopes tend to be somewhat smaller. Uh, these tend to be shorter. Of course, some of the very big telescopes have now been adapted to have very long focal lengths because the longer the focal length, the greater the magnification. And yes, with the very big telescopes, we wanted a big magnification. Some of you may say, well, wait a minute. This mirror here that gets in the way, that would then block out the light coming in this direction. That's indeed the case. So you wouldn't get the advantage of having the collection area of the entire mirror, but a small portion of it at the center mirror would be blocked out by this mirror here that would then reflect the light into the eyepiece. And then you may also say, well, doesn't that get in the way? Doesn't that kind of block part of the image? And the answer is no. Any portion of the mirror here, and of course, remember, if you look at the mirror, the mirror would look like this, and then the central portion would simply block out like that. So this would be blocked out by the reflecting mirror right there. But this rest portion, the other portion of the reflecting mirror, uh, or I should say the reflecting objective mirror there. This would still be a, a large percentage of the total area of the mirror, so you don't lose much of the image. You don't lose much of the photons that you'd be able to collect. And on top of that, this would not get in the way at all. You would not see it because any small portion of the mirror could generate the entire image. So therefore, when you put something in the way, you don't see it at all. What's even interesting is if you take a look at, if you take one of these telescopes and you put your fist in the way right there, you don't see the fist either. The fist blocks some of the photons, but it does not affect the image, except you get a smaller, less intense image because you block a few more of the photons. Other than that, you can have the mirror there and it doesn't affect it at all. 
So when Newton came up with this, it was very ingenious. This is the major design that we then developed for many hundreds of years because it's much more practical than building the refracting telescopes. But then eventually, the size of these began to overwhelm the ability to build them. So when we got to the point where you want to make a telescope that was even bigger than the Hale telescope, you started building these in sections. And we'll take a look, another look at how we built a refracting telescope, where we built the telescope in sections, or sometimes even with pistons underneath to actually adapt the shape of the, of the objective mirror. But again, that would be for another video. Here it's sufficient to understand that besides the refracting telescope that bends or refracts the light at the front of the telescope, we end up building a telescope with the mirror at the bottom, which is then able to be supported by a strong structure at the bottom, so you don't have to worry about this getting in the way, and we can, we we're then able to build much bigger and better telescopes. So for several hundred years, the better telescopes we built will probably be reflect, the reflecting telescopes rather than the refracting telescopes. And I better stop.